Hey everyone, it's Karen with the Yes Please Paper Crafts, and this video is part of a YouTube hop called Let's Get Organized, where each month the participants in the hop will share their ideas on how they store and organize different types of things in their craft room. And this month's focus is on dies, stamps, and embossing folders. So I do have quite a bit to share. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. Uh, my organization storage systems are not complete, but I'm gonna share with you what I have done so far. And unfortunately, one of the things that I didn't do when I first started collecting scrapbooking and crafting items was to create some kind of an organization system in inventory. So I am a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that I have. And so anytime I put in a new organization system into my craft room, it takes me a lot of time because I have so much stuff. <laughs> so if you're just getting started out with scrapbooking or card making or whatever type of crafting you do, and you just have a few supplies, now is the time to go ahead and start getting your organization in place and creating storage systems that will work long term. And uh, if you just like create it up front and just add to it as you are bringing new things into your craft room, it's going to be a lot easier than if you wait until you get a ton of stuff and then try to do it. <laughs> so I have a whole bunch of stamps here and I use the same system that is used by Jennifer McGuire. I know a lot of people out there have probably uh, seen her videos and if you haven't, I'll put a link to her video that she shared her stamp storage in the description below. And uh, so all of the ideas that I have for my stamp storage right now came from her video. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what I have here, but these are fridge bins. And uh, I have, these are like the double ones. And then I have my stamp stored in here so that I can just flip through them. So my stamps are really a mess right now. They're not organized at all. I did move last year in August. And when I moved, I took everything out of the bins and put them into boxes when I was packing everything up. And then when I moved into my new house, I took it out of the box and just stuck it back into the bin. And so, so now it's not in any particular order. And I think at one point these were ordered by the manufacturer and then whatever the, um, the stamp was called. So I have them kind of ordered like that. And I think I'll probably continue to do that, order it by manufacturer and then by the name of the stamp. And I think the reason why I'm going to keep doing that is because I'm, I have a lot of stamps and I'm going to store this in my closet. So I have it in the closet that's in my craft room. And the reason why I want to do that is because I don't feel that this is necessary to have close by to my workspace. Because if I'm going to be doing any kind of stamping, I'll probably try to find the stamp and bring it to my work table. So um, I've been thinking quite a bit about how I'm going to find my stamps and dies because right now I don't really have an organization system. I just have things stored in, in a certain way. So I'm going to share with you how I have this stored and talk a little bit about how I want to design an organization system that's going to work so that when I want to use something, I'll be able to find it. Because one of the most important things about organizing is having a place to put something and then also knowing where it goes so you can put it back. So um, it's it's really more important to you know have that than to, to have it stored in a particular way. So I'm just going to continue to store it like this and organize it by, sort it by manufacturer in, in the name of the stamp. If you don't have very many stamps, you could actually maybe sort it by type. Like for instance, here I have alphabet stamps. So you could put all your alphabets together. You could put all your sentiments together, maybe all your flowers together and um, add some divider tabs and you can sort it that way. If you just have a few stamps or if you want to sort it by categories, that's another way to do it. I think organization is very personal. I think what works for one person might not work for somebody else, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to create this YouTube hop because uh, I love watching videos where other people share how they organize things. And I get a lot of ideas from watching other people. I might not necessarily take everything from that person and uh, use it, but I will take things from different people and design something that works the best for me. And so I would definitely suggest, you know, doing that. And uh, I think what Jennifer McGuire did with the with having these fridge bins and and doing it this way with these pop these uh, clear sleeves uh, is a really good way to store the stamps. And so let's talk a little bit about the storage. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because, as I mentioned, I did copy everything from Jennifer McGuire. And this was from a long time ago. I used to mainly do card making. This is probably back in maybe hmm, 2015 or maybe even earlier than that that I started doing this. 
I can't really remember. It's been so long ago. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, there's a lot of different types of pockets or sleeves that you can get. And I picked these up from Amazon a long time ago. I don't know if these are still available. And my packaging doesn't even have any branding on it. But if I can find this on my Amazon account, I will put a link to where you can get these um, DVD sleeves. So this uh, DVD sleeve, I think it's a five by seven, and you can get these DVD sl or sleeves in different sizes. So if you have smaller or larger stamps, uh, you can uh, use different size pockets. And there's different manufacturers that have this, but I just picked up these from Amazon. And uh, they're not, uh, I haven't ever had any of them rip but they're not as heavy duty as some of the other storage pockets like the Avery L. I think Avery L pockets was the one that Jennifer McGuire used, uh, but uh, these work really well. And what I find that I like to do is to put a piece of inexpensive cardstock in there. It gives it a little bit more weight. And I'm gonna show you here. I just um, went ahead and cut a piece of cardstock and just put it there. Now that actually serves as giving structure to this pocket so that it, it actually works a little bit better and it's not as flimsy, but it also allows you to see the stamp because it puts a white background there. You can also do something like I did here where you put uh, one stamp on the front and then you can put another stamp on the back. So this was uh, the stamp set that I had is two, two of the same exact stamp sets. So I could, um, if I wanted to use something where I was making a word where I needed to use two E's, I could, use an E from both sides. And so I have two of those stamp sets in the same pocket. Okay, another thing that you can do with the um, pockets is you can just use the uh, manufacturing um, branding that comes with the packaging, which is what I did here. And one of the reasons why I did that was because it had examples on here. This is actually a die and stamp set from Stampendous. And it has a, um, a die that's included. So what I did was I cut down the packaging that came with this uh, set and then I added some magnet here just so that I would have this uh, place for this to go. Now this was just leftover magnet that I had when I created my die storage. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could just dump these um, dies into the pocket and because you can close this pocket off, you know, you don't have to worry about things falling out. So if you have a stamp and die set, you can definitely store both of those together like this. And then even if you have um, rubber stamps like this one here, this is a, a stamp from Stupendous as a background stamp that's a rubber stamp. You can even use um, these pockets to store your rubber stamps. So that's just a few examples of the, the different uh, stamp sets that I have here. And sometimes I like to include the packaging because it does have um, sometimes, uh, you know, more information on it. So I will often do that if I have the packaging available. Isn't this stamp set adorable? <laughs> <laughs> this is super cute. Every time I look at the this little dog, it just reminds me of my two little girls, my little Yorkies. So <laughs> I'm going to have to make something with that little dog because it's adorable. <laughs> okay, so this is basically how I have my stamp store. Now, if I have a larger or smaller stamp um, with the small ones, I have a little bin that's smaller where I keep them and I have smaller pockets. So if you have stamps of different sizes, you can actually just buy uh, different pockets and different sizes. And I'm gonna show you, I have some larger stamps. And um, what I ended up using for these larger stamps, let me pull this over here so y'all can see it. And I'm out of space. This is my bin for my larger stamps and it's full, so I really can't buy any more. <laughs> It's full. I, I couldn't add a single stamp on here, and I don't even think I can flip through it because it's got so much stuff in there. Uh, but what I use uh, to store these is are these pockets here. And uh, these come from Hobby Lobby, and I believe this is the Paper Studio. It's actually part of a system that is a binder system. It has black three ring binders, and then these are the sleeves that you can use to put into the binder. Now, I really don't like using binders. I would prefer to flip through something than to pull a binder off or a book off of a shelf and have to, because of the weight of that, it's so heavy. I would rather just be able to flip through things. And so um, I have uh, just taken these pockets and used them um, just as, you know, to be able to flip through. I didn't actually get the binders. 
So um, they have the refills there, and when they put them on sale, that was usually when I would pick them up. I love these, though, because they have the tabs. Eventually, I would like to be able to put something on the tab up here, but for right now, I haven't done that. Um, but uh, eventually, I want to get around to, um, you know, doing a little bit better job of organizing my stamps and dies. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the difference between a storage system and an organization system, because... Basically, this is just storage. <laughs> I'm storing these. I have them stored in pockets and it's in a bin and it's in my closet. So that's where they're stored. Um, the difference between having a storage system and having an organization system is if you just have something stored, you still have no way of really being able to find exactly the thing you need when you want it. Uh, so if I wanted to have this particular stamp right here, I would need to spend time flipping through these bins until I figured out where it was. <laughs> okay, so if we if I wanted to add in some kind of organization system, let me share with you some of the reference guides that I've created so far for my craft room. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing this for my stamps. I'm just going to say that up front. This will not be something I do for the stamps, but I wanted to show it to you because if it's something that you would want to consider doing, you know, you definitely could do that. It's just that I have so many stamps uh, I, and I have all of these books already, these reference guides. I really don't think I want any more for my stamps and dies uh, because as much as I have here, I have even more stamps and dies. And I think I'm going to do some kind of electronic uh, storage system or organization system uh, using my iPad. So um, I'm probably going to do a video at some point talking a little bit about the different types of applications you can use. Uh, the software that you can use on your computer or your iPad or your phone that would allow you to do uh, some kind of a digital organization system. But uh, if you wanted to do something that's printed, this is my um, organization for my paper pads. So I have uh, these two books and in the books I have all of my paper pads, 12 by 12, 6 by 6, 6 by 8, like it doesn't matter the size and they're all in here. So what I do when I get a new paper pad is I create this printout using my computer. And this is just, um, I think it's like a five by, about a five by five square. And I just print that out and then stick it into this book. Now, if you want to have more information about this storage system for my 12 by 12 paper pads, I already have a video on my channel, actually a couple of videos where I shared how I did this. And I'll put links to those videos in the description below. But if I want to be able to find some paper, I like being able to just flip through this and see what paper I have available. And when I find the paper, I can go and find it in my closet. So right now, all of my 12 by 12 paper pads are in my closet. And so for instance, if I wanted to uh, get this particular paper pad right here, let's just pick one. So this is the Horizon paper pad from uh, Paige Evans. Uh, I want to make a project with this. This is the project pad. I could just flip this over and on the back of it, I have written down the location of where this is in my craft room. And so I can go right to my storage cubes in number 150. And that is where this paper pad would be found in my craft room. So I have these paper pads stored in cubes. And so in order to look through them, you have to pull the paper pad out from the uh, storage cube, which is a pain in the butt. <laughs> which is why I really wanted to do this type of an organization system where I would have the ability to be able to flip through and see all of the paper pads that I have available to use for my projects, find the one I want, and then uh, be able to go and just quickly get it. And then when I'm finished using that paper pad, I know exactly where it goes back in my craft room. So the next time when I want to create a project using that paper pad, I can find it again. Because um, I think one of the things that I that a lot of people fail with with their organization system is that they organize things and they they get it all organized. You spend hours or days or months organizing something, and then you start working on projects. You're pulling stuff out of this organization, and then when you go to um, put it away, maybe it doesn't go back to where it belongs. And so the next time that you want to use that, you can't find it. <laughs> and to be honest, I'd rather spend more time crafting than looking for my stuff. <laughs> so it does take a little bit of time to set up an organization system, uh, but it is in the long run something that I find very valuable in uh, crafting. Okay, so another um, set of reference guides that I have here are for punches. 
And I have way more dies than I have punches. And I'll, I'll just show you all three of these books are my punches. So there's no way that I'm going to do this <laughs> for the dies um, because this took a lot of work. Now, I really do think that it's valuable to have these reference guides, physical reference guide for my punches, just because um, I can see really quickly um, the different punches and uh, I can use this as a guide. So if you're trying to punch something out, I can actually use this reference and I can put it on top of something like here and I can see whether or not I would be able to use that punch um, to cut out the shape. And so I think it's really cool to have a reference guide like this for punches um, that I can use. So like for instance, here's a label. If I wanted to combine a stamp set and label together, I could um, do this where I'm trying to see if that would fit in there before I actually um, would use pull this punch out to even use it. So in this punch system, so for in instance, if I wanted to use this Autumn bl Blessings, I could see that this would fit that quote. And then if I wanted to use this punch, I know exactly where this is in my craft room so I can go grab it and then I will be able to use it for that project. So I think it's very valuable sometimes to have a physical reference guide that you can use to pull items out of your craft room. I have my punches stored in a couple of different places, which is what the color dots are for. And so, um, and I have these grouped into different types of punches. I have images, shapes, and borders. And then I had created little tabs where I could see exactly here, flip to the different ones. If I wanted a border, then I could just flip through all of my borders. Okay, so that is the punch reference guides. All right, so um, the last reference guide that I wanted to share with you guys is actually for my embossing folders. And this was a system that I actually started, an organization system I started several years ago that I've never finished. And I'm gonna show you um, that now. So let me go ahead and move these stamps out of the way and then um, I can um, bring in the embossing folders and I'll show you the reference guides that I created for the embossing folders. Okay, so here's one of my bins that I have that has embossing folders and I have a lot of embossing folders because I picked up quite a few of them at Tuesday mornings when I found them for 99 cents. And then I also got quite a few of them from uh, Cricut when Cricut would have their mystery boxes. So a long time ago, they would have mystery boxes with tons of stuff like dies and embossing folders and even like the Cricut cartridges. This was a while back. And so, um, you know, you could get tons of stuff for practically, you know, it was really cheap. <laughs> so I bought a whole bunch. So I have tons of embossing folders. So for instance, I have this one. This is uh, Anna Griffin. It's really pretty. And I would say these were only, you know, maybe a dollar or two once you factor in the mystery, the cost of the mystery box and all the things that were included. I kind of miss that Cricut doesn't have those mystery boxes anymore. I think they do have the mystery boxes, but it's all digital. You don't actually get physical products or maybe they might have the supplies where you get a bunch of vinyl. And, uh, but they don't really have, you know, what they used to have with they had all of these uh, different products like embossing folders and dies. Okay, so um, I have all of these stored in this bin. This is from Ikea. It's called the Soccer Bit Bin, and I'll put a link to where you can find this at Ikea. They still sell it there, although I don't think this color is still available. It also comes in white, and they have different colors uh, depending on the season or when they change their colors. Um, I like this color, though, because everything in my craft room is either white or this aqua teal color because that's my favorite color. <laughs> so um, like my stamps, I also use the pockets. These five by seven pockets are perfect for these DVDs or embossing folders. And these are the DVD sleeves is five by seven. I do have some bigger embossing folders that are from Spellbinders. I recently joined the Spellbinders Embossing Club. They have a new um, embossing club for last year and I was a member all year long and then I'm getting the embossing folders as part of my design team for this year and I love their embossing folders but they're much bigger so you can use them to make larger cards. So these are mostly smaller embossing folders. Okay so what I had planned to do for my reference guide was to actually take a piece of cardstock and do an embossing on that cardstock and on the back of it I had printed out the name uh, the manufacturer, what size embossing folder it was, the name of the embossing folder, and how many was in that set. 
because uh, a lot of these Anna Griffin ones come with uh, the full background and then a border strip, okay? And so my thought was that I would have uh, all of this organized by manufacturer and the name so that I would be able to very easily find it. Uh, so that's about where I stopped <laughs> with doing that. And how I got this printed onto this cardstock was that I actually just took some white cardstock and I, I used, I think, Microsoft Word. And then um, I, I created a table that had four um, squares in it. And then I just put this information in the center of each one of those squares, printed that out, cut it into fours, and then I, I uh, cut it into the size. I uh, rounded the corners and then I embossed it. So that's how I got the typing on there. I actually printed it first and then I embossed it after I printed it. Um, so that is uh, how I decided to do that. Just because a lot of times I use my label maker, but that's a lot of information to use on a label. And it would have taken me a long time to do that. And I used to do computer programming and I typed all the time. So I'm really uh, fast at typing on a computer. So this is really easy for me to do. So um, I think this worked out really well. And you can see that I have all of this. So I can flip through here and see exactly what embossing folders I have. And the whole reason why I really wanted to do this was because it's so difficult to actually know what that embossing folder is going to look like unless you have an example or a sample of what the embossing folder will do. So um, if you look back here and we're looking at the different embossing, um, these look very similar, but they're different. But if you were just looking at the embossing folder itself, you might have a hard time, you know, figuring out what exactly it's going to do once you emboss your paper. So I think it's really a good idea to have a physical reference guide for embossing folders just because that way you can see exactly what's going to be embossed. And it's really cool <laughs> to actually see that. And I, I would definitely recommend to do something like this as you're bringing in and purchasing embossing folders. Just go ahead and just quickly make a, uh, a guide like this. Just take a piece of cardstock, emboss it, and then you can just put it on a ring like I have here. And you'll have um, all of your embossing folders to where you can see exactly what you have before you create your project. Now, what I need to do to finish this organization system, because it's really not completely done yet, is that I need to be able to look here and be able to figure out where this is in here. So I could, um, I think what I'm going to do is still sort it by manufacturer and then the name, uh, because that way I would always be able to, I wouldn't have to worry about how this is sorted and organized because um, I wouldn't want to, to actually do this where I have the different type of book that it is and then have tabs in here uh, of the different types of embossing folders. So I probably want to do this here as well. I might make a cover. Um, this cover was made from a placemat from the Dollar Tree. So I bought a placemat from the Dollar Tree. You know, it's a big placemat and it's a very heavy plastic. And I used that to make a uh, cover. So I'll probably do something similar for these two books. I'll make a cover and then I'll also put divider tabs in here and organize them by category. Uh, for instance, I could do backgrounds, I could do borders, um, do, you know, maybe birthday. This is thank you. So maybe card sentiments. And this is Christmas. So I have to go through and try to figure out what the categories would be and make some tabs and finish this organization project. So that's one of the things that's on my list of things to do eventually. <laughs> I'd like to be able to uh, get this uh, organization system finished so that I it'll be a little bit more useful. The other thing was that when I moved, um, I also took all of the things out of these bins and then dumped them back into the bins when I was unpacking. So none of this is sorted anymore. <laughs> So I just made more work for myself, but <laughs> I'm not moving anymore. This will be the last time I'm ever going to move. So once I go back through and reorganize and sort through all this stuff, um, then hopefully things will get a little bit easier and I'll be able to find stuff in my craft room. Uh, right now, I kind of feel a, bit, a little bit overwhelmed because even though I have a lot of organization, 
it kind of got a little bit destroyed by the move. <laughs> okay, so let me go ahead and move this out of the way and let's talk about how we how I store and organize my dies. Okay, so let me pull out one of my storage bins here so that you can see how I have my die stored. Now these are also stored in the soccer bit bins from Ikea. This is a white color. And so I have these stored in here. These are really heavy. And I have all of my dies stored in a, um, it's a cart from Michael's. I think this is called the Hudson cart. And I'll show you a picture of that cart up here on the screen so you can see. But it allows you to have three of these bins on each row. So I have uh, the second row and the third row with these bins, the soccer bit bins. And then I'll share with you what I have on the top in just a minute. But this is uh, how I have them stored. Now, what happened, of course, was when I moved, everything came out of the storage bins and ended up like this. So here's a lot of my dividers all together. <laughs> Instead of dividing up my tabs, they're all uh, now together in one place. So um, I still need to go back through and uh, reorganize this. Now, for this one, uh, I didn't have these stored by manufacturer and by uh, the name of the die. I just had it stored by the different categories. So I'm going to show you all some of the categories that I have here. I have like doilies, lace, scene builders. This is for card making. We have fashion, miscellaneous objects, food and drink, animals, floral. So this is kind of how I had all of my dies organized at one point. <laughs> Not anymore, but <laughs> at one point they were all organized this way. <laughs> Okay, so we have borders and, and uh, different ones like that. Now, this original system came from that YouTuber and um, she was super awesome. I loved her video. She actually made an updated video. And for the life of me, I can't remember her name or her YouTube channel, but if I find it, I will put it up here in the screen and also look, link it below. And uh, so that was originally how I did this. Now, the only thing that I found that didn't work really well was that these storage cards um, the things would fall off of it. So for instance, you just would have this in the bin and then you might lose some of the things there. It actually sticks on there pretty good, but when you're putting things in and taking them out and flipping through them, it, if you knock into or you know touch one of these, it'll fall off. And so what I ended up doing a few years later was combining uh, this system with the cards with the Jennifer McGuire's using the pockets. So I will just take one of these pockets and just add it here. And I started doing this. I haven't completely finished, but all of these have pockets. But there are still quite a few that don't have a pocket. So when I see one that doesn't have a pocket, I can just add that. And because the pockets are a little bit shorter than my dies, I just fold this tab in and then just add that. And just by having it in the pocket, it keeps it from um, falling off so I don't uh, lose uh, the different dies that are on there. Uh, so at some point I'll go through and just, you know, use the red, some more of these uh, plastic sleeves and add that. Okay, so you might wonder why do I have the magnet? Because you could just use the pocket and you wouldn't really need the magnet. Or why do we have, you know, the chipboard? And uh, the reason to use the chipboard and the magnets is to be able to visually see what you have, especially when you have smaller items like this. So I could just take all of these stars and just dump them into a pocket and that would be good. But if you have it stored this way, it makes it really easy to see what you have and also to use it. And so I really like using the magnets like that. Now I do have some dies where I just have one die. Originally I was putting those on the magnet cards and then I got to thinking about it. I was like, well, that's kind of a waste of a magnet. Why would I use this entire magnet, which magnets are expensive, <laughs> uh, just to store like one or two large dies. So what I ended up doing for some of these dies, instead of using the magnet cards like this, I just take one of these pockets, add a piece of inexpensive cardstock, um, and then just put the dies in there. And uh, that works really well too. So if you just have a few dies and you don't really need to have them arranged and to where you can see them all. Uh, let's see if I can find another example. Um, so you can see here, this is a really good example. Um, you might want to like be able to see what you have because if these were all just dumped into a pocket, you wouldn't be able to visually see what dies are on this, on this uh, magnet card. And so I think it's really good to use the magnets with your die storage, even if you use the pockets as well. 
Um, and I'm adding the pockets in here as a way to protect the dies to keep them from falling off of those magnets. Okay, so this works really well if as long as your dies are smaller and you don't have anything bigger than five by seven. But if you end up getting bigger dies, uh, this doesn't work really well. So I think it was back last year when I did, or maybe the year before, I think it was the year before I did the uh, Anna Griffin, not even last year. I don't know if it was last year or the year before I did it, Anna Griffin Creates. And with that uh, online event, they send you a huge box of stuff that has all these dies. So the dies were really large and they didn't fit on this because they're, um, you know, like for slimline cars, really tall dies. And I was watching my friend Rosalie, she's the, her channel name is Can't Wait to Plan. She was sharing some of the ways that she stores her dies. And so I got this idea from her and I'll put the link to her video in the description below um, to where you can find uh, her first video that she did where she shared her storage. Now she's a part of this YouTube hop as well. So she's gonna be sharing a video in this YouTube hop. So be sure and check out her video. She's got a lot of really awesome ideas with organization. But uh, what she did was she uses the, um, let's see if I can find it. She uses these magnets and I picked these up from Amazon. She shared this, this is from uh, Amazon. These are eight and a half by 11. Now this company uh, has magnets that are also different sizes. So if you wanted to do the five by sevens, they have those as well. So you can go and check out, you know, the different size magnets that they have. So I would get the magnets and also you can get the chipboard in the same size. I don't know if I have any chipboard in here, but I have chipboard that's the same size as these magnets. And so um, what I've been doing, what I, what she would do, or Rosalie would do, is she would just adhere this onto the chipboard and make a card like this, but in a much bigger size. And so I really love that idea, but I also love the idea of having the plastic sleeve. So I was looking around my craft room and I had used these DVD, not DVD, what are these called? These are shop ticket holders. I had originally bought these to store eight and a half by 11 cardstock and just specialty papers. So I had some of these in my craft room, just in this, just left over from another project. And so I thought, well, this would be really good to use um, for storing and it does work really well. So let me show y'all how I have these stored. And I started to use this for my Spellbinders dies because I'm part of the Spellbinders Club and I get a lot of dies each month for Spellbinders. I'm on their design team. And so I started creating these uh, storage cards where each month I had this, uh, all everything that I needed for that uh, particular collection that I was working from. And uh, when I get the monthly kits, let's see if I can pull one of the monthly kits. What I was doing was I have the card kit, which comes with stamps and dies. I have the Stampin' Die Kit, and then this is the Glimmers Kit. And so I have the, all of the dies here. I created labels that I put here so I kind of know uh, what each one of these is. And then on the back here, I added in some pockets for the stamps so that I have all of the stamps and coordinating dies all in one storage pocket. So I think this is a good way um, to, if you have things that kind of go together where you need a larger format, um, die storage card. This works really well and it also works really well to be able to keep the stamps and dies together so I can just pull this whole card out and then flip it over and I can easily access the stamps back here and what I did to attach this was I just put some ATG onto these pockets and then just stuck them onto the back of the chipboard and this makes a really good way to store my stamps and dies. Now, I also use the same storage system for the Anna Griffin uh, dies that I have, the larger ones. And uh, so it works really well for if you have a lot of smaller designs that you want to keep together, or if you have larger designs that don't fit on the smaller die storage cards. Now, I have these in the top of my Hudson cart, and I have them there so I can just flip through like this and find the one that I need and it easily uh, be able to see what, you know, what I need to, to grab. So um, that's working out really well. And I love having that storage. Uh, it's really easy and convenient to be able to, to have that to flip through. Now, the only, the only bad thing about all of this die stuff is it's super heavy. 
So if you're thinking about doing this, I would definitely recommend using some kind of a flip storage and not using a binder because those binders get heavy. Um, you're going to end up, you know, having to use two hands. It's going to be really heavy if you have uh, three, uh, like the three hole sleeves and they're going to like sag. So um, I definitely think using the storage cards and the flip bins and having a way to be able to flip through it like this is a little bit easier than having any kind of a binder because the magnets and the chipboard make this storage solution super heavy. And uh, <clears throat> having this in a cart definitely does help uh, because I can just roll the cart around. Uh, I did think about possibly putting this into the closet, but uh, sometimes I like to, if you're working in a project and you're trying to, to do something, you might reach for a die more than you would a stamp because the dies, you have a lot more basic shapes like stars and hearts, um, borders, labels, where a stamp set is more specific, usually it has a topic like birthday or pets or, you know, Christmas. And so I think uh, when you're thinking about the different things that you have in your craft room and what you want to keep close by to your workspace or to be able to easily move to your workspace, I think it's important to consider that. And so for me, the stamps is something I probably would just at the beginning of the project, figure out what stamp set I want to go use, pull that stamp set and bring it back. But with the dies, I probably want to have those close by because as I'm working on a project, I might want to, you know, take um, and, you know, use this to create a card panel, maybe cut out a star, you know, uh, use something like to, to cut a circle. And so I think it's, it's kind of beneficial to have this close by as you're working and creating a project. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and insert a picture of my Hudson cart here so you can see what it looks like and how I have uh, this in my craft room. I don't have a home for this yet. And I had originally um, came up with a floor plan of how I wanted my new craft room uh, furniture to be laid out and then found out after I did that that it's not working out too well. So I've had some challenges with that. And I really want to rearrange some things in my craft room, but now um, that I have things in here, it makes it a little bit more difficult because in order to move the furniture, I have to take everything out. So I have Calyx units with a whole bunch of stuff in it. And at some point in the next few months, I want to move some things around to make it a little bit more functional and uh, to try to find a place for some of the things right now that I don't have a space for. So um, eventually uh, it'll find a home, but for now, it's just kind of hanging out around my craft room and I move it whenever I need to get to whatever is behind it. <laughs> so sometimes it's in front of my uh, table, sometimes it's in front of the Calyx unit. And uh, so that's one of the things that's kind of making my room a little messy right now is not everything has a home. And uh, um, I still kind of a little bit uh, challenged with having my layout not quite the way I need it to be. And one of the biggest problems I have was when I designed my craft room and my house and the floor plan, I had them put in a floor outlet in the middle of the room because I always wanted that. <laughs> Every craft room I've ever had, I wanted a floor outlet in the middle of the room. Um, and But for some reason, when I did that, I guess I didn't really, at that time, have my floor plan where my work table was going to be. And it ended up that that floor outlet was right in the way. <laughs> so... Uh, and uh, also my filming, it, if you do YouTube videos, it's very difficult because you have to have a place to film, a place where your lights are set up, um, where, you know, uh, it's hard because if you have overhead lighting, it could affect uh, the room and you could have glare. And so that's kind of a challenge as well. So um, I'm going to try to work on that and see if I can uh, figure out, you know, a better, a better place for things to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to share with you guys. I think at some point I wanted to do a video and talk a little bit about uh, how to create um, a digital inventory of your scrapbooking supplies. There's a lot of different software out there that you can use. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of Evernote. There's also Airtable and there's other things out there. And they all have uh, their pros, their cons and their pros. Um, and I'm not exactly sure at this point which one I'm planning to use. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I haven't invested a lot of time 
entering in all the information um, to build in the inventory, I want to make sure that whichever software I'm going to use, and I'm going to that's going to be the one I stick with because. Once you start putting it in there, if you get midway through and you find out it's not really working well for you or there's, you know, something better, um, then you have to go and, and put, you know, redo everything. So I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time up front, you know, going in here and just taking pictures and putting all of this into one of those softwares until I decide for sure which one I'm going to use. So once I've had a little bit more time to look at the different options available, I will maybe try to come back and do a comparison for you guys and talk a little bit more about uh, the different ways that you can do a digital inventory. Um, I think that uh, in some cases, having a physical reference guide like I share with you for embossing folders, punches, and um, you know things like that is really useful. But in other cases, it's it's uh, it makes it a little bit more challenging if you have something uh, physical because it takes up storage in your craft room and uh, you, it, it's a little bit harder to search through. If you have something that's in a software that's digital, uh, one of the biggest advantages of having that in the software is to do searches. And so, for instance, if I put all of these dies and stamps into a uh, digital inventory, and I was looking for a star, if I typed in the word star, it would pop up everything in my whole craft room that had uh, stars in it. So um, I think that's one of the biggest advantages to having that. Um, another advantage to having a digital inventory is that you can use it when you're shopping, especially when you're shopping online. If you wanted to check to see if you had something already before you make a purchase, uh, you can you know, use your digital inventory and do a search to see if you already have this particular die or something similar before you make a purchase. Because uh, I'm sure most of us have actually purchased the same thing more than once, <laughs> especially when you start to, to really get a lot of uh, things in your craft room. Sometimes it's hard not to duplicate a purchase. You know, you might forget that you purchased something and you never used it and then you see it later and you think, oh, that's really cute. I want to buy that. And then uh, see two of them in your craft room later. <laughs> I'm sure we've all been there before. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's all I have for this video. Y'all be sure and go check out everyone else's videos that is participating in the Chi Chi Pop so you can get more ideas and tips on how to store your dies, stamps, and embossing folders. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time uh, to get organized for the month of February. I can't remember what the topic is going to be, but um, each month we'll be focusing in on a different topic in our craft room and I think in the month of March we're going to be doing a full craft room tour so y'all look forward to that <laughs> um, and uh, that's all I have so y'all take care hope y'all have an awesome weekend and I hope to see you next time bye now